about two years ago, we were having a conversation and he said, you know you teach the secret to life is peak state versus lousy state or being energy rich versus energy poor, that a relationship, you can love somebody, but if the energy's low, it's not gonna show up, the energy's high at will. He said, what if you swap those words and you swap peak state for a beautiful state? I said, that works, you know, a high energy state is a beautiful state. Any state where your high energy would be like love or joy or gratitude or drive or courage or faith or, you know, playfulness or fun, any of those things are beautiful states. So he goes, yeah, yeah, I agree. And I said, and then suffering states would be low energy states. So that would be frustration, sadness, anger, resentment, loneliness, boredom, whatever. He goes, yeah, that's exactly right. So I can swap those. He goes, if you swap them, there's something cool that you might see or do. He said, I've made a decision that I'm gonna live my life where I'm gonna live in a beautiful state every day, no matter what, even if it doesn't, even if it rains on my parade, even if people do things that are unjust. And he said, the reason is because in a beautiful state, just like you teach a big state, everything flows. And I said, well, that's pretty much what I've been teaching. He goes, yes, but if you think of the lousy states as suffering states, he said, then you can end suffering just by ending the state. But I realized I didn't relate to suffering. Like if you had told me two years ago, Tony, do you suffer? I said, are you kidding me? I got the greatest life. I have the most incredible wife and four kids and I got 31 companies and I'm financially free and I have a mission I love and I'm in good health. And that would all be honest. I wouldn't have been dishonest about it. But what really helped me out of that conversation, I left there and I went, well, where do I suffer? And I realized frustration is suffering. I get frustrated. You know, I get concerned, I get pissed off, I get, you know, worried sometimes, I get these yeah. feelings. And so what I decided to do was, you know, just really create a 90 second rule for myself where I would end suffering as it arises. Because anybody tells you you're gonna end suffering is full of crap. And the reason is your brain is a two million year old brain and it's not designed to make you happy, it's designed to make you survive. Mm. But there's no saber tooth tiger for you to react to anymore. So now we worry about what are people thinking of us? Do I have enough money? Over the last two years, what I've done is play this little 90 second rule and if I feel tension in me, I go, okay, that's suffering. Where's it come from? What am I stressed about? What am I concerned about? And what I immediately do is I realize the stressful thought, since I've seen Christian G, I kind of traded one thing. What I really do now is I dig in and I notice that the only time you have stress or suffer is when you believe a stressful thought. Because what are the chances of everybody doing exactly what you think they should do the right way every day? Zero. What are the chances of the people you love doing what you want them to do the way you want them to do them every day? Zero. What are the chances of you doing the right thing every day, even if you're talented and disciplined? Zero. Zero. So your happiness will never last as long as it's got expectation behind it. What I did was I began to realize I made the decision, it's the most important decision I believe of your life, that I'm not going to suffer anymore. Life's too short to suffer and I'm going to live in a beautiful state every day. And the way I do it is, I catch myself when I start to get that sense of stress, I let it go, and I see the idea go by. So your thoughts, thoughts about this person messing up your business, you're not following through. If I was in a room with 10,000 people, I guarantee you 60, 70% of the business owners have the same thoughts at times, right? right? I ask people all the time, tell me your most stressful thought. Oh, I'm worried about my children, this may happen. How many people have had that thought? Everybody. Uh, I might not make it financially well, but how many have had that? Everybody. My point is, it's not your thought. It's the mind, not your mind. When you think it's your mind, you identify with it, and it's, you can't separate from yourself. Right. But when you realize, these thoughts have been around for millions of years, and I'm just thinking the same thought that so many people thought before. So what I want you to realize is thoughts are invisible waves. When you turn on a TV, it takes invisible waves, and depending on the channel, you're gonna see a love story, or an adventure, or a drama, or a comedy, or, or a horror. The way you use your body determines which of those thought waves come through you. One moment you're pissed off, the next moment somebody makes you laugh, you change your body, you change the channel, you change what comes through you. So what I've tried to do in this area of beautiful state is simple. First, identify where you're suffering. What's your favorite flavor? Are you a worrier? Are you a pissed off person? Stressed, angry. What is it you do? Yeah. Second of all, decide you're gonna kill that monster while it's little. You're not gonna wait till it's Godzilla taking the city. You're gonna break the pattern. You start to feel the stress. You see it as thoughts going by, and then you focus on something to appreciate, enjoy, or love. Appreciation, love, and joy destroy suffering. You can't be grateful and angry simultaneously. It's possible. You can't be worried, and fearful, and, and grateful simultaneously. So I tell people gratitude is one of the emotions to cultivate that'll destroy the suffering.